for Ford, as you take a look at shares right now, they are trading lower. And the reason is because of the new guidance that it brought up regarding the 2018 and fourth quarter earnings that they will release next week. The guidance was between $1.30 and $1.50 for all of 2018. Today they came in and said it'll be $1.30. Widely disappointing to most of the analysts out there. They did say that in 2019, earnings, sales, cash flow, they could be higher, but there was no guarantee. There was no range given for earnings per share. When you look at Ford right now, this is a company that is very much in the midst of a transition, a turnaround, although people are wondering, Where's the end of the turnaround? When do they come out of this? Their sales could rise next year or this year, I should point out, due to new models that are coming into the market. You've got the new Ranger pickup. You've also got the new Explorer that they showed us uh, just last week in Detroit. Their sales last year down 3.5%. The market overall, by the way, was up fractionally. So they did not perform up to the same standards as the rest of the market. Take a look at shares of Ford and General Motors over the last year. And the reason we're pointing this out, these guys tend to trade in tandem. They always have, and many people believe, they always will but notice the split oh I want to go back maybe about three months ago and the reason they started splitting is because when you look at GM's guidance especially when it comes to things like mobility plans for the future monetizing cruise automation a, a rideshare program those are the types of things that analysts are pointing to and saying, look, I like the future with General Motors if I'm an investor a lot more than I like with what I'm seeing with uh, shares of Ford. And in the last six months, you really start to see General Motors outperforming or performing better, I should say, than Ford. Ford down 23% in the last six months, while General Motors is slightly negative. Remember that Ford's dividend for the first quarter, it remains the same. It has not been changed, and that's certainly some good news for Ford investors. Guys, this is the summary that I think really hits the point in terms of the difference between Ford and GM right now. Adam Jonas of Morgan Stanley, widely followed. Many consider him the best analyst on the street. He says about Ford, significant questions remain about the near-term and long-term direction of Ford's fundamentals and strategy. We believe investors must exercise extreme levels of patience with this story as it unfolds. That summarizes why Ford continues to struggle much more so than General Motors.